shoulder blow. He sits with the three. He goes up and gets the ball. He's a super What's up guys, welcome back to another Top 25 Breakdown. Today we have number 11, UCF, the kings of the group of five. Kings, the king, yep. <laughs> the kings of the group of five. Uh, looking at their 2018 schedule, they did uh, obviously phenomenal. They went 12-0 in the regular season, 13-0 uh, with the conference uh, mm, 11, championship game. 11-0, remember they canceled the game. Oh, canceled the game, so they yeah. technically went 12-0. and uh, and then got, they played really well against LSU, but LSU's power was just a little too much. Yeah, if people think otherwise, L everybody's going to be saying that LSU lost their entire defense because of all those ejections and injuries. And right. Stuff. Well, I mean, it was a really good game either way. Uh, they had really good cl close games against, I would say, a Memphis team, mm -hmm. also a Temple. Yep. And maybe a little bit in the Cincinnati game. I know it was a night game. It was close in the first quarter, mm -hmm. but after that, I think UCF kind of was able to kind of pull away. Yeah, very anticipating. Wasn't that a college game day? Yeah, it was. It was college game day. College game day. And then Memphis again in the conference championship game, which was another good one. Uh, so Brought them back. Yeah. Damn. Last year, offense finished fifth in the nation, average, averaging uh, 52, 523 yards and 43 points per game. Mm -hmm. And they have eight starters returning, so they should finish in the top 10 easily mm -hmm. uh, with returning pieces like uh, running back uh, Greg McRae, Adrian Killens Jr., and Otis Anderson. Also wide receivers Gabriel Davis and Trey Nixon. Uh, secondary guys like Richie Grant and Navelle Clark and Brandon Moore should be anchors for that secondary on defense. Mm -hmm. And also D lineman Brendan Hayes uh, and also linebacker Nate Evans. Along along with uh, um, Eric Gilliard as well, uh, complimenting Nate Evans. Uh, just the defense overall is looking good. They only lost five uh, five starters last year, so right. not, not bad to replace them. I think the main thing is on, that def on the defensive line, but we'll get to that here in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at this team, I think the biggest strength is our running back. Absolutely. That running back is that running back duo, not just duo, but also that just that backfield is, is mm -hmm. huge because mm -hmm. they got three guys that can actually like you, it doesn't matter who who gets the touches, they could be home run throwers. Nothing but speed. I think this is the most electrifying uh, running back committee in college football. Exactly, like I, like we said, Greg McRae, he was a former walk on, mm -hmm. stood out a lot last year, especially running over a thousand yards. Uh, and then Killens, he is probably the fastest player in the country, uh, especially because he's a home run threat. And Anderson, who is a very, he was a very good, like just a player, football player in general, right. that could be used uh, in the in the backfield and also like as a slot receiver. Um, and I and I, I'm I'm in love with with Greg with Greg McRae. I'm not 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 in not in that way. As a player, I'm in love with him. He's averaging a nine yards every every time he touches the ball. Right. That's phenomenal. Every time you just feed him the rock, he's getting he's giving you nine yards. And then and like you said, like you mentioned before, he get he got close to 1,200 rushing yards. Uh, in only 133 attempts, 10 touchdowns to his name, and he's also good catching the ball out of the backfield, along with Adrian Killens and Otis. And uh, and I think what else is going to help this 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 running back trio is going to be the O line itself. Um, I think they're going to be probably the best o offensive line in the American Conference. They do return three uh, key starters, each of them having most likely going to be uh, preseason All Americans in their conference, as well as well as, uh, having like uh, another guy come in who's had 13 game experience and one young guy. Uh, over on the left, on the left tackle, left guard. Yeah, yeah. Overall, the offense should be the offensive line should be fine, just because oh. they got three big uh, anchors to kind of hold it mm -hmm. down. Definitely a strength for this team. Right. And then switching over to the side of the ball, uh, secondary, I think it, again, in my opinion, is another strength. They do return three out of the four starters with Richie Grant. You hinted before, Neville Clark and Brandon Moore. Uh, Richie Grant being a kid who has 108, 109. Some some other sites may say total tackles. Uh, with 68 solo, three tackle for losses, and six interceptions by himself last year, and that's just phenomenal. I don't, I don't think I ever, heard, I didn't, I don't think I heard his name in the running for uh, the Jim Thorpe Award, which I'm kind of baffled by. But then again, I guess it's just the, it's just the competition you play. I think yeah, and also it has. I think it might have to do something with like the amount of exposure your games get. Oh, okay. Being in the American, you don't, you don't get as much exposure. I think the only game that was. Uh, like it was a nationally televised game was the yeah, Cincinnati, Cincinnati game. game and probably uh, the conference championship game. right uh, but moving on to concerns I think one of the biggest concerns uh, is quarterback 100% I think quarterback is a huge concern just because they lost uh, McKenzie Millen yeah, but it's, a, it's like a it's like a turbulent story road that, they, that they've been that they've had throughout right this. 
And then they just lost uh, Daryl Mack. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be... That sucks for them. That's, that's and then tough. now they have to go to Brandon, which I don't know if Brandon is going to be the right quarterback for this system just because of his inconsistencies, um, especially throwing the ball and especially touchdowns and uh, interception ratio. Yeah, it is tough, especially when his first starting uh, his first starting season at Notre Dame, he was, uh, I think, a below 50%, just below 50% passing, uh, passing completion rating. Uh, that's not good. That's just not good. But he is good on his feet. And I think I, I, I'm going to go uh, and, and to contrary to what you said. I think he's going to fit in this system just because I think this is a, a very quarterback run heavy kind of system where right. he can choose where the quarterback can choose whether to run to keep the ball, uh, throw it, hand it off, whatever it is. A couple kind of RPO systems. So I think he'll be OK as long as, you know, as long as he doesn't have to. It, not, they're not relying on him to throw the ball so often. Yeah, my main concern is basically like if they get down like they did against Memphis, mm -hmm. like can he make those throws to come back? Right. That's like that's the biggest question that right. I have for them, because when because at Notre Dame, I don't think he had that ability. Now he did play really well against Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, he had a really big run, but I, in the second half of that game, he was they kind of like they made sure that he couldn't get anything else. Kind of stalled. stalled yeah. Out. Exactly. Right. Um, and uh, he has to stay healthy. That's one of the bigger things because if he goes down, then they have to go to a freshman. It does. It's gonna either be uh, Quadri Jones or Dylan Gabriel. Dylan Gabriel being a true freshman and Quadri Jones being a registered freshman, mm -hmm. and they're gonna be very inexperienced at that at that position. While they might have some uh, knowledge of the playbook, there that that inexperience is gonna get exploited. Yeah, especially with as you mentioned, Dylan Gabriel. Uh, uh, he's a true freshman, but he is an early enrollee, so he has seen the playbook for almost six months now yeah. a little bit under six months um although it's that's not that's not enough it's not enough time to you know get his feet wet and get him and throw him into game time if brandon winbush goes down right so uh especially with dylan gabriel being a pro style quarterback listed as a pro style quarterback uh and quadri jones being uh, a dual threat quarterback I don't, I don't know i don't know which quarterback will flourish in this system right uh but moving on to another uh concern is i would say is uh defensive line i think defensive line is going to be the biggest concern just because they were pretty bad on the run stopping mm -hmm. uh, and they just lost a lot of bodies last from last year so they're gonna have to try to reload or at least kind of try rebuilding that defensive line um, but they do bring back like we said Brendan Hayes who's the only player from UCF that has actual experience uh, but they do bring in grad transfers like uh, Cam Good and uh, Brandon Wilson, Cam Good being from Virginia Tech, and Brandon Wilson being from Indiana. Uh, whoever the like the defensive line is made up of, the whole group just needs to do better at stopping the run. Mm -hmm. that's, that's that's definitely true. Looking at their 2019 schedule, it kind of looks a lot like last year's. It, mm -hmm. The only difference is they add Stanford, and they add I would say a Florida A&M, I think. But other than that, yeah. majority. Of, oh, and also a Houston because of the conference. It's almost, it's almost identical. Although you don't, you don't see Memphis in the regular season. Right. I mean, last year we would have been fun to see them against uh, UNC, um, mm -hmm. but now we got to get to see them against the Stanford, and I think that Stanford game is going to be really big uh, for UCF, and I think UCF probably wins that one. Really good games against uh, Houston and a uh, USF, both at home, so that would be good. They do have two road tests, I would say, against Cincinnati and Temple. Cincinnati being one of those teams on the up and up in that conference, and then Temple being one of those teams that pushed them a little further than they would they expected right. uh, from last year. As well um, as a as well as a road game at Pitt. Although we do know what happened last year, they did they did give Pitt quite a spanking last year. But right. then again, it was home. I think was it not home yeah, it to home. UCF, and then now it's at Pitt. Maybe Pitt puts up a better fight. Right, Pitt. It has been known to kind of like upset some teams. Mm -hmm. They upset uh, what was it, Clemson, a few years ago, a couple years, years ago. ago. Yep. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see that game as well. Um, what do you think? Worst case scenario, looking at this schedule. Uh, <laughs> worst case scenario, I'm thinking this team's still good enough to go 11 one. Mm -hmm. I think. I think this just based off the schedule, looking at the schedule, I think the only game they can really lose to is either the Stanford game or the Cincinnati game. I think that's 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 their only threat. In this, in this entire schedule. We already talked about Cincinnati in one of our previous videos. Cincinnati is going to look very good. They pretty much return everybody, um, and they were fantastic last year. This this team, I think it's the UCF team, with the coaching staff they have, with the players they still have that are healthy, right. I think they're going to be just fine. 11-0-1, I think, is worst case scenario. I think worst case scenario, like, we, like I mentioned earlier about the quarterback position, if they can't play well from behind, like if, they, if Brandon Wimbush can't make the right throws right. to come back, from like being down 14 or 21 or you know like it doesn't matter how much they're down by but if they can't if he can't make the right throws 
I think this this season could be bad. And uh, even with the good talent that they have in this conference, mm -hmm. I think that their worst case scenario would be nine and three. I think losing game probably to Temple, a uh, Cincy, and maybe dropping one to uh, Stanford or Pitt. But I don't see the Stanford as like one of those games that they'll lose to, okay. just because I think Stanford has a lot of uh, bodies to replace. And I also see that this is a home game for UCF. Right. right. But what do you think uh, most likely? So most likely, most likely, I'm thinking this team returns to 12 and 0. Uh, okay. Again, I, I know I'm saying that. I might. I'm not trying to be biased. I just think this team. It's just they're good where they're at. They have. Like I said uh, previously, they have probably the most electrifying running back committee in college football. This, this, these guys get our home run hitters all the time, and as long as long as they feed these guys, and as long as Brandon Winbush does not turn over the ball, they're going to be just fine. And they're going to win games. They're going to put up the, the. I'm not going to say the same numbers as last year with the help. I'm not going to say the same numbers with a healthy uh, Mackenzie Milton, but they're going to be almost at the same level. Right, I think uh, most likely I think they go 11 and one. I go like I mentioned, like we both mentioned, this team is very talented, very good. Uh, they have a lot of speed, a lot of athletes, uh, athletes on like both sides of the football. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the biggest question, like not only is quarterback but also defensive line, is can they stop the run? Right. And that'll be very uh, interesting to see, especially against Stanford, who can run the ball and they'll probably be able to run the ball, but. They do have to replace a lot of bodies right. uh, for uh, Stanford. So we could be seeing a lot of shootouts. We, we can see a lot of shootouts for the UCF team. Possibly. 11-1, uh, probably losing to, I would say, a Temple. I think Temple is one of those teams that gave them a, a push last year mm -hmm. that they didn't expect. So I think Temple might be able to kind of upset them. Right. But what do you think best case scenario? So. Well, I already said 12-0 yeah. for the most likely scenario. Best case scenario for me would be for them to go 12-0, win their conference, and then I'm going to say he's jokingly go to the playoff. They're not going to get into the playoff. They're going to get very close again, maybe to, to the number eight final ranking like he did last year, and then stop there, maybe seven at the best. If they go 12-0 again, they'll get up one more spot to seven, and that'll be it. This team not going to get to the playoff just, just based off the competition they play, but... I mean, I already mentioned 12 and 0 for most likely scenario. I think they go 12 and 0 again. I think best case scenario, yeah, you're right. They go 12 and 0. Um, I think if they play Memphis in the conference championship, conference championship game, I think that's the real test mm -hmm. because Memphis is probably getting better, and I do think Memphis is slightly better, has a better quarterback than uh, UCF right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go with Memphis beats them in that, but I think they still get a good bowl game, and I think ending the season with a bowl win, going 13 and 1. It's not bad. That's a really good year and for as, UCF. As long as they don't cancel any other games. So they've, they've had to cancel games for the past two seasons. So I think that was because of uh, what was it, the hurricanes. hurricanes. Yeah. Coming. So, <laughs> but uh, other than that, I think this team is very good. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they get left out of the playoff again. Because if they do, then a whole bunch of noise is going to be said. And All types of noise. People are going to be, you know, belly aching about everything. Yeah. Expand the playoff and like throw throw a group of five in there. You know, we don't we don't, we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, we're really close to the football season, so that's pretty fun, and we'll be able to watch them here soon. Yeah. Especially when we'll get to see them against Florida A&M and see how they really do. Right. So that'll be fun. Uh, but thanks, guys, for watching this video. If you guys liked it, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe because it helps us out. Comment below. Tell us what you think yeah. of uh, UCF going into 2019. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Yeah.